Okay, you guys, I am working on getting this space cleared out. It's going to be a minute because the shop is currently full and I don't have room for more furniture yet. But I did sell a small piece, the little white dresser, and I'm thinking this little piece here would be a good replacement. So I'm going to go ahead and grab it and uh, we're going to work on that for today's video. Okay, so I have to make it work today. It's about to rain outside and I want to spray this piece and it needs to be done today so that I can stay on schedule for this week. So I have laid down a drop cloth and I'm going to paint it in my garage amidst all the other pieces. If you didn't know why I needed a tool shed, now you really understand. The title of this video also promises to show you two ways to strip furniture without using chemicals. The first way is to use your heat gun. You want to go ahead and grab your heat gun and just heat up that old paint and use a scraper to get it off. Now I do recommend that you wear a mask since you are heating up that paint and you don't know what paint was on there originally. So I am wearing my mask and I'm heating up these hearts and these raised characters and I'm stripping them off with my Cricut spatula. that is finished the rest is flat I'll be able to sand that off just fine so I'm grabbing my orbital sander and I'm using 80 grit sandpaper yes I know it's a bit rough it's really low grit however I'm trying to get through several layers of paint and also trying to get all of the raised images off of this now I do have to say this was quite oddly satisfying once I started I could not stop myself so I kept going for everything that I can get with my orbital sander I'm going to grab my heat gun again and go through those those really hard to reach places as you can see while I heat it up and I use my spatula it comes off really easily and all I'm going to do is take a rug and just wipe it away and then I'll take a folded piece of sandpaper and just go through that crease and that will be all and all of this paint will be gone and you won't have the messy chemicals and the gooey paint that you get from stripping using the chemical strippers. Here it is all done. Uh, this is all the sanding I can endure. I don't know why I even did this. This was very time consuming but once I started I could not stop. I do like how it looks. I feel like I do want to stain it and then paint the inside part right here. And do some decoupage I'm gonna spray the inside because no one's got time to sit here and put more time into this little thing so I'm gonna use my sprayer to spray the inside we're gonna brush paint this part and do some decoupage and I'm thinking of staining the rest of it 
Now that we are done with the outside, you guys, it's raining again the next day. So I'm going to go ahead and paint this inside as I already have that session set up. In my sprayer, I have Tarnished Pearl by DIY Paint, which I have linked in the description. This is three parts paint, one part water, and it's going through my HVLP sprayer from Harbor Freight. The compressor is a 20 gallon compressor from Home Depot. Once I'm done with that, we're going to bring this outside and I'm going to paint using my uh, French tip brush to get to all those corners and now that I'm painting you can see um, those details those metal details that are going to make it difficult for me to stick with the original plan of just putting transfers straight onto this cabinet <laughs> is on outside already it's looking a lot better but it's still quite a ways to go let me show you the inside now oh this knob is wet Ta -da. all right there we go so I sprayed the inside and I was getting a lot of bleed through and I ended up having to use the rhizolium primer and so that's what's on there right now and that primer is dry so I can go ahead and spray the inside a second coat of the tarnished pearl which is also the same color I'm using on the outside. So this is going to need to dry before we do a second coat. And then we need to plan for the next step. The original plan was to use transfers. However, I'm having to detour because I'm running into some unexpected things. Like the holes in the metal will not allow me to apply transfers. So what I'm going to do is uh, have this uh, Bible readings for school. It's a really old book I got from a garage sale. And I've been tearing pages out to do certain projects. And I really love the edge on this. And I love that it's a Bible reading. Uh, so I'm going to take these pages. And that's what I'm going to decoupage on top. And then I think I'll still be able to do some transfers on top of this. Let me show you what I mean. So this is something I'm working on for my shop. But I'm thinking something like this would definitely look good. So I'm going to try to replicate something similar to this on top of that. The next day, once my paint is dry, I'm going to go ahead and decoupage those pages. I'm using DIY liquid patina, which is a decoupage medium, a transfer medium, and also a top coat. I have linked it in my description below. It is the best decoupage medium on the market, in my opinion. Once I have all of my pages attached, I'm making sure to tear the excess using my finger so that it looks edged and not too sharp. Once this is finished, I will apply that top uh, coat again using that liquid patina as top coat. I will apply that again to make sure this is nice and sealed and protected. Now, I did ask my friends uh, what they thought about me leaving this cabinet as two-tone. And the feedback was to paint the whole thing because that two-tone just wasn't really looking as nice as I thought it would. So once I'm done with this decoupage part, I'm going to go ahead and just use my Klingon brush to paint the whole thing using the leftover tarnished pearl in my quart. Once I'm done painting, this is all. This thing is going to be finished. I'm going to apply the Blossom Flight Transfer by Prima Redesign. I'm going to link it. And this cabinet is finished and it's in the shop. Let's see how it turned out. Oh,